lead attorney here. Hope you guys are doing well, man. Listen, listen. Uh, I ain't even supposed to be here. <laughs> oh, struggle streaming already. Man, y'all are not, I was supposed to be gone. Y'all are not even supposed to see me. Uh, the last stream that I did, I mean, it will, it's a stream that I will always remember. I want to thank you so much to everybody who showed up, everybody in the comments, everybody in the chat, everybody who blessed me. It was amazing. <laughs> I want to give a special thanks to everybody, but just, I mean, I can't, I can't not mention people like Dang, Brandon L. Jet, people like Friends Giving, A Free, Christine Riba, Instructor Mike, all of y'all. Lord knows the way Centennial G bless me. Veronica. And uh <laughs> I mean, I've never seen, and I'm not just in my experience, but even with other YouTubers, I've never seen anything the way damn Matt B and oh Thane. <laughs> Boy, they blessed me so. I mean, they damn knocked me off of YouTube. I, I'm not even supposed to be here. What happens? What happens when a stripper has like a good Friday night? You don't see her on Saturday. She just go. <laughs> Y'all weren't going to see me today. I'm so, uh, what, November or something. So I just really want to thank y'all for blessing me so much. And it was, it was my intent not to, not to stream at all, but we got a big dog in the house, right? So I got I to gotta make an exception when a big dog comes through. I uh, want to give a quick shout out to everybody who has purchased the, the course, my live streaming course, so you can learn how to do this, right? And uh, the discount, there's a, there's a discount code in the description if you want to check it out or if you want to find out how much I make doing this, this live stream and stuff. Uh, shout out everybody also to Locals. Y'all see my name right here, the lead attorney at Locals.com. I was just over there on Locals. Boy, it was, it, was, it was getting a little bit rated X over there. So y'all can check that out. And also big shout out to everybody in the mastermind. Now, guys. What is going on? Y'all have seen the thumbnail, this whole Nicki Minaj and uh, this, this content creator who goes by the name of Nosy Ho. I'm not calling her a Nosy Ho. This is her name. And she's being sued in, in federal court. Now, y'all know that I covered the Cardi B Tasha K trial. That suit was also in federal court. That was down the street here in Atlanta. And that was very interesting. And I take a, a special interest in YouTubers like me getting sued for defamation because, you know, it's very easy for us to, to, to say some things that other people might take the wrong way and they can file suit. Now, filing suit is one thing. Actually, winning the lawsuit is another. And so today we are going to talk about this Nicki Minaj uh, nosy ho situation. And as a special guest, I have Nosy Ho's attorney here, Bob, Bobby Samini. Now, y'all have heard of him. He is, he's one of these high powered attorneys. All right, represents numerous celebrities. Uh, he represented Don Sterling. Y'all remember when Sterling was in that BS <laughs> with the NBA? He was the owner of the Clippers, represented T Payne. Represented 3-6 Mafia. Shout out to 3-6 Mafia in the damn house, man. Uh, also, multiple successful uh, class action lawsuits. And he has been on uh, various uh, platforms of, of widespread uh, recognition. NBC, Fox, Huffington Post, ESPN, LA Times, Forbes, just saw him in Rolling Stones. And we have him now here to explain to you the ins and outs of this, uh, this nosy ho versus, well, I guess it would be Nicki Minaj versus uh, nosy ho case. So let us bring up our man, the celebrity attorney, Bobby Savini. How are you doing, Bobby? Let me bring you up. How are you? 
Hey, lead. I'm great. Thanks. And thanks for having me on. I love your channel. Um, and uh, it's it's wonderful to be on here. I'm, I'm honored to, to, to get to come on and uh, and be part of your channel in some small way. Oh, well, let me tell you, it's an honor to have a big dog here, man. So I really appreciate you accepting my invitation to come and to give us kind of a behind the scenes, in-depth knowledge of working knowledge of what's going on in this case. Now, let me say beforehand, and, you know, just attorney to attorney, I really want to point this out. You know, word on the street is that you accepted this case pro bono. And can, can you explain to us kind of what, what it means for an attorney to accept a case pro bono? Sure. Yeah. So um, so every year we do take a few cases pro bono, and that's in situations where uh, the person does not have the financial ability to pay for representation. And I know you know this lead, but the, the, the problem in our country is that um, the caliber of representation you get is directly based on how much money you have. And so it's it's really unfortunate because, you know, we're taught all this stuff in school about, you know, there's justice for everybody. But but if you don't have money, it's very hard to um, to, to get represented. And, um, you know, of course, like in criminal cases, you can get a public defender and and those people truly are doing, you know, amazing work, but they're also overloaded. So, so for, for my firm, every year we take a few pro bono cases where there's some really good cause and um, we handle the cases without uh, payment from, from the clients. And this was one of them. And, and to be honest with you, the, the reason I, the reason I took it was more because of nosy after I talked to her and she told me her personal background and, and I'd love to share some of that with you, but um, you know, we can get to that whenever you feel appropriate, but I, I think it's, it's good for people to know. Absolutely. And I really just want to salute you for that guys. It is very, very difficult for attorneys to take cases pro bono. This is because all attorneys are extremely busy and accepting a case. Even if you don't get paid, it still comes with the same liability. You still have to do a great job, a professional job. And so it's, 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 it's something when an attorney takes on a case with no compensation, but still has the risk and, and, and has to do all of the work. And it's one thing, I guess, for me to take a little divorce case, say, okay, baby, I'll help you out do a divorce. It's another thing to take on a pro bono case in federal court against someone who is, who has the means such as a, a Nicki Minaj. So I absolutely wanted to point that out. That is a huge thing for an attorney to do. And I want you guys all to appreciate what this man is really undertaking to, to take a case for free in federal court. That is a, uh, that's something. All right. Now, uh, no, I guess Nicki Minaj has filed this, this defamation case against Nosy Ho. She's saying that Nosy Ho defamed her. Can you explain to us what defamation is? Sure. Yeah. I, um, so defamation is when somebody goes out and basically makes a false statement about another person. There are a lot of nuances to defamation cases. For example, um, the, the false statement has to generally be made with malice. Um, the person making the statement has to know that the statements are false. Um, and then you've got other components too. For example, the statement has to um, have the effect of somehow damaging the individual that the statements are made about. Um, and, I, and I think in this case, they're going to have some problems with sort of with both of the both of the key components. There are, of course, lots of other nuances. But but the, the first part of it is um, when you're talking about a public person and Nicki Minaj clearly is a public person. The standard of um, of getting a defamation claim um, done is way higher. So public people have um, themselves out in the in the world; they're high profile, etc. And so, in those cases, you have to show the actual malice standard, and that's pretty tough to get to. Got you. Now, Nikki or either Nikki or Nikki's publicist or attorney made some statement about, oh, you know, we're going to we're going to take Nosy Ho's channel. She's not going to be able to pay us. 
a lot of people are saying that Nicki Minaj is suing Nosy Ho for $75,000. Is that the amount that she's suing for or kind of where, where is that, where is that um, concept coming from? Yeah. So the, a lot of people are confused about this because the, the complaint has this reference to the number 75,000. So as you know, lead, when you sue in federal court, you have to allege a, a minimum of $75,000 in damages. And so that's why you see that number. That's not what they're asking for. Or what they're, what they're saying to the court is that our damages are at least $75,000. And so that's, you know, that's, that's a, just a jurisdictional issue. Gotcha. Now, uh, everybody knows who Nicki Minaj is. She's, she's, she's very famous, a talented singer. No, not a lot of people know who, who Nosy Ho is. And you mentioned that when you spoke to her and kind of got her background, it really informed you about this person. Can you tell us what you know about Nosy Ho? Sure. Yeah. So, so um, when Nosy and I spoke, she gave me her, her story, basically, you know, how she ended up where she was and, and, and so, and a lot of people don't know, Nosy was adopted out of foster care shortly after birth um, to a family in Louisiana who already had two kids. They adopted her and, um, and another child, her uh, brother, or her adoptive brother. Um, but she did not have an easy uh, upbringing. Um, her adoptive dad uh, died when she was eight. Her adopted mom died when she was 18. And when that happened, she came to New York and basically lived in um, shelters and sort of made her way from place to place and tried to figure out how to how to earn a living. And and uh, and and in order to do so, she um, became a sex worker and started working phone sex operating lines. And, um, in that process interacted with a lot of other women who had been raped, uh, like she had. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, she did that for many, many years. And just as the pandemic hit, she decided to start a YouTube channel to talk about celebrities and, you know, th different things that are happening. Um, um, in the celebrity world. And that's how she got into the YouTube world. Um, and so, you know, when I talked to her and I, and I had a better understanding of sort of where she came from and, 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 you know, what she's been through in her life, um, you know, I had a, a lot of respect for that. You, um, you know, you see, you see a lot of people um, out there on Twitter and Instagram and, you know, that, that make disparaging comments about her. Um, but I have a lot of respect for her. Most of us have, have had much easier upbringings than she has. And, and, and she's been through a lot. And, and so that's a big part of why I wanted to get into the case. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Now Nicki Minaj has filed this case and apparently it, it has been filed and it's in court. Typically once a case is filed, then um, the some some type of sheriff or deputy has to so or process server has to serve the complaint on the person, and then it kind of goes from there. Can you explain to us number one if if nosy has been served, and if so, what are the next steps? Is there an answer or kind of how how do these cases typically typically unfold? So you're exactly right. Um, she does have to be served. She hasn't been served yet with the complaint, but she found out about the complaint like a lot of us did in, in, in the media. Um, I have been in touch with um, Nikki's lawyer by email. And so on that front, we'll probably just work it out where he'll serve us and, and, and we'll move forward from there. So once she's been served, uh, then we have to make some decisions on um, – what we want to do next. And part of what we would do, or at least some of the things that we're looking at are filing motions that would essentially dismiss the case. Um, and that's something we're looking at now. Um, uh, New York has some pretty good laws that protect uh, speech, especially where it's directed at somebody who's a public person. And so I, I think at least at this stage, we want to look at that pretty closely and, um, 
file a motion along those lines to get this case thrown out in the early stages? Yes, yes. Well, are you thinking of possibly filing any type of, of countersuit in this case, or, or is this case maybe inappropriate for that? So we haven't fully decided whether there would be a countersuit. One thing I will tell you is that um, she has been receiving some pretty aggressive threats um, online and, um, uh, and, and some, some threats of physical violence, things of that nature. And so we may have to take some steps to, um, to stop that. Um, whether it's restraining orders or things of that nature. And so, for example, and I, I haven't looked at these carefully yet, but I will soon, um, there have been comments made on Instagram, for example, by folks suggesting or threatening uh, Nosy and her safety. And some of those have been um, liked by by Nikki through her mm. Instagram account. And, and I, I think, you know, regardless of what's been said or the fact that there's a, a legal case happening. I don't think any, I don't think you can ever justify um, physical violence against another person or encouraging physical violence um, against another person. I think that's just, that's just not appropriate in any case. A hundred percent. Now you mentioned um, this, this case is very early on and she hasn't even been served yet. So you're just still getting into the, the case and investigating, trying to figure out kind of the, the ins and outs of it. The, the vast majority of cases uh, in the country really don't go to trial, right? Usually there's some type of negotiation and settlement. It's for a lot of reasons. Most of the time, it's better to settle a case if you can. Uh, is there any indication of, is this uh, uh, from you with speaking to the other attorney, if this case is, can possibly be settled without going through the, the expense and the stress of going to trial? <clears throat> well, that really depends on, um, on, on Nikki and her team at this point. Um, what I, I wouldn't say at this point, the likelihood is high that it's going to get settled. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and the reason I say that is I think nosy has been singled out because <clears throat> if you look out onto all the platforms, you're going to see, lots of other people who have made similar claims about drug use and cocaine uh, with respect to Nikki, lots of people, some of those very high profile, wealthy people, other celebrities, and none of them <clears throat> have been sued. And I think there's an easy explanation for that. It's really two, two things. One is um, <clears throat> suing those people would uh, result in a pretty vigorous defense. And, and I don't think she wants to do that. I think she sees Nosy as a really easy target that she's going to sue somebody who doesn't have any money, who doesn't have the ability to defend herself and get a judgment essentially because the other side can't put up a defense and then go wave that judgment around and say, see, I'm the winner. And in fact, all these people lied, et cetera. So <clears throat> I think that's, I think that's what their thinking was. I mean, mm -hmm. it seems odd. I mean, why would you sue, somebody who you claim yourself is a nobody what would be the reason right. for that that's exactly right if this case were to to settle at some point in the future what do you have in mind maybe some some good points that you would want to put in that settlement uh uh that you think would be favorable besides just the actual dismissal of the case is there anything that, that you might want to want to, to add in there well m the biggest concern right now is that um, one, we, we would want to make sure there were, um, assurances that, uh, Nikki is not going to perpetuate, um, threats of violence, et cetera, um, against nosy. Um, and, and the other thing too, is I think part of the motivation behind this lawsuit was, uh, the fact that nosy had, um, Jennifer on her show, uh, who had, who has um, come on and talked about uh, her rape um, and directly implicated um, Minaj's uh, husband. I think that was the that was the motivation or part of the motivation behind it. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that you know um, Nosy has no intention of stopping 
um, that cause. She's going to, she's always going to support Jennifer and she's going to support um, other uh, women who have been victims of rape and violence. And so um, that, that would be an important point. I mean, if Nikki were really, <clears throat> if she were really smart, actually, what she would do is come out and, uh, and, um, you know, make a statement that, that she's going to support women who have been raped and, and subjugated to violence as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that seems to me a universal cause everybody can get behind. Yeah, it just might be a little difficult considering, you know, her husband, right? <laughs> but I, I think you are exactly <laughs> right. I want to take a look for a second at the complaint. What we're looking uh, at right now, guys, is the complaint for again from Nikki, who whose name is Onika here, against Nosy. And one of the first things you notice when you start reading this complaint is the insulting nature of it. You guys can can see right. Let me see. You guys can see right here. I don't know if um. Let me see. You guys can see right here, it says, uh, you know, in a different age, Nosy's lie, this uh, Nosy's lie would have been meaningless because she is the ultimate nobody, right? So you have Nikki's attorney calling Nosy the ultimate nobody. Now, this is interesting because usually, you know, juries and judges don't really consider uh, the actual complaint, right? That's not something that they, they, they really uh, take into account. So, for her to be insulting in this document, you would think there was a different motivation. Do you do you do you have any idea of why she would <clears throat> insult Nikki this way in these in, in this complaint? You know, it's so interesting, and I, I cannot understand. I mean, other than to take a jab at her, mm -hmm. um, I can't understand why they would why they would make this kind of a claim because it really cuts against their own legal claim. I mean, if you come out and say, you know, the person's a nobody. Um, nobody's ever going to listen to, you know, what they have to say, et cetera. I just, I, I, I'm, I'm a little surprised by it. Um, but, but clearly this was something that they wanted to just, you know, get the, get the personal jab out and, and get it in a, in a court document, um, so that they could, you know, show it around. I just, I don't get it. I don't understand why they would put something like that in there because it actually weakens their own case. Absolutely. And uh, this is kind of going, my mouse is going pretty fast. I wanted to show you the, um, let me see here if I can get the actual statement. Uh, there was a statement that Nosy is uh, said to have made in this. Let me stop, let me redo this share screen for a second. There's a, there, it seems like there's one statement that Nosy is supposed, that, that, that Nosy made that has really triggered all of this. Uh, let me see if I can bring it up here now. Um, this statement here, see if I can find it. Um, I can't pull up page three for some reason. I'm sorry. It looks like it, it, it's a statement where um, she says that Nicki Minaj or she said she's. It's alleged that she, that Nick, that Nosy said that Nicki Minaj is a or uses cocaine, right? And just cocaine, shoves cocaine up her nose. And I thought that was interesting because it seemed like that was that one statement that this whole complaint, this whole case revolves around that one statement. And when I was covering the Tasha K. Cardi B case, um, there were so many statements that Cardi mm -hmm. B was was alleging and actually proved that um that tasha k made i mean it was so many uh but in this case it looks like there's just one uh does that does that sound weird to you or interesting that you know she makes this one statement and now Nicki minaj wants to sue her for this one statement that really you know again it doesn't sound too bad in 2022 considering the industry that she's in okay mm -hmm. well i mean there's a couple components to it one is I still believe that the primary motivation to sue uh, is because of her um, her giving Jennifer a platform. And I know, you know, people have lots of different opinions about this, but but I think that's pretty clear that this is what triggered her. 
Um, and after, after Jennifer appeared a couple of times on Nosy's YouTube channel, um, she actually got um, some mainstream coverage um, as well. Um, and so I think that was, that was the, the trigger point. Um, the, the part of it that is interesting to me, and, and I appreciate this because I've got so many videos and um, different clips that people have sent me from all over with Nikki, you know, and her own statements. And um, there's a, there's a particular interview and I don't know where it was from, but, but Nikki Minaj was, was, was live herself talking about these allegations of her drug use. And she says in the video herself that she's not uh, shy about using drugs and that she's proud of the fact that she did. And I have no issue with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. People have their own, um, you know, um, set of standards, whatever they want to do, as long as they're not harming other people. Mm -hmm. But then she goes on to say, if you're, if you want to know what my drug or drugs of choice are, you should just listen to my music. And if you listen to the music and you look at the lyrics, I mean, she talks about a lot of drugs, including cocaine. Um, so, you know, to me, it's, it, it is a little bit surprising. I mean, you can't really go out there and build your whole persona um, about being, you know, this person and now somehow say you're damaged because somebody went out and said you use cocaine after you've given an interview saying that you're proud of using drugs and you have no problem with using drugs. And then you point people to your music and lyrics to learn about what kind of drugs you like. Absolutely. I think I've got it pulled up now. Looks like we're like we're talking about this um, this uh, mm -hmm. line right here. It says uh, that um, Nosy said, you know, shoving all this cocaine, shoving all this cocaine up her nose. Allegedly, thank you. Allegedly, but we all know it's true. Fuck. Listen, I can't even say allegedly that uh, with that because I we know it's true. I'm not saying allegedly on that Nicki Minaj is a cokehead. So it looks like this statement right here is the basis of the entire uh, complaint. Now, what's interesting is when I was sitting in the trial listening to the, the Cardi B, uh, Tasha K uh, case, uh, Cardi B had made numerous attempts to try to get the matter resolved without going to court. Cardi B had hired a law firm and that law firm had sent a cease and desist. And then Tasha K says she wiped her ass with the cease and desist. <clears throat> and then uh, Cardi B hired another law firm and sent two more cease and desist. Uh, Tasha K got on her, got on her show and was waving that around. Then uh, Cardi B called Tasha K and really just said, listen, you know, Please just stop. She went to the whole, you know, you're a mother. I'm a mother, mother to mother. You know, can we please just, you know, deescalate this and, 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 and try to put this behind us and go forward? And Tasha K kept insisting. Uh, if you look at this case, was there any, any type of communication like that? Any multiple cease and desist? Any telephone call saying, hey, you know, why can't we let bygones be bygones? Why do we have to, to take it to this extreme? Was there any any communications that you know of from Nikki or from her attorneys to try to stop this before the complaint was actually filed? Yeah, so so there there was some communication, um, and Nikki uh, Nikki messaged her on Instagram, um, and it and the messages were not, "Hey, let's try to work this out or let's have a discussion." Um, the messages were, "I'm going to sue you and I'm going to destroy you." And, uh, and that's, that's really what it was. And that was, I think, right before the lawsuit was filed or, or right around the same time that it was filed. Yeah, we can pull up the, um, you sent me some of the, let me pull it up right here. Having some trouble here. We have one, let's pull this up. We have one, uh, text here Let's see if i can blow it up it says uh you're this is from nikki so actually nikki and uh nosy this are, are communicating this is in nosy's dm on instagram and nikki 
slid into Nosey's Instagram and, and sent her these messages. And Nikki says, you know, Nosey, you're in for a huge surprise. Shout out to losing all your income. I hope speaking on my son was worth it, dummy. We checked. We know you don't have any money to really speak of. So losing all the little advertisement money from YouTube will make a huge dent. You'll only be the first of many. ha 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 right? And then uh, Nosy responds, says, are you okay, Nikki? File your lawsuit, okay? I'm not afraid, and I won't be intimidated. And then Nikki says, you know, yay, right? <laughs> now, let, let, me, let me stop right here and, and, and kind of point this out, too. When Nikki says, I hope speaking on my son was worth it, dummy. Do you do you know what she's she's referencing right there? Can you talk to us a little bit about that? <clears throat> yeah, I do. Um, so during her during a couple of her sessions, she made some comments about Nikki's son, and and that was one of the very first things I talked to her about. And um, although it's not the subject of the lawsuit, um, it was something that's out there. And and I asked Nosy if she was willing to make a apology about that to get out there publicly and admit that in that instance, she was wrong. And there was no hesitation from nosy. She was willing to do that. It's really funny to me though, lead, because like, you know, I don't know what's happened out in the world. It used to be that when somebody did something and they were wrong and they came out and said, you know, I, I made this particular statement and it was wrong and I apologize for it. You would say, well, that's like a sign of integrity. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because she put that out on Twitter and a lot of the comments were really negative towards her. But, but you know, when you think about it, most people who have been wronged, all those people who have made these kind of statements, when they've been wronged by somebody, they want that person to come out and acknowledge that and say, I was wrong, I made a mistake, I'm sorry, and I get that, that that's not appropriate. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's, it's not part of the lawsuit. It's really not. It's not part of the claim. The claim really is the statements about the cocaine use. And so she didn't have to make the apology. She didn't have to come out and do that. But um, I thought it was important for her to do it. And and she came out right away and 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 did that. And I'm proud of her for doing it. And I think it shows a lot about her character. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know that. Um... <clears throat> I know that those statements did seem a little bit aggressive, but her apologizing for it should, should go a long way. So I, I totally agree. I want to show you something that I thought was also particularly interesting in this, uh, in this complaint. And it says right here in paragraph four, it says, uh, on information and belief and as discovery will likely reveal, Nosy has been acting as a proxy for another performer who mistakenly believing that she and Nikki are equal or stars of equal stature has repeatedly used other social media into intermediary intermediaries intermediaries sorry in a hopeless effort to advance her career at plaintiff's expense so she's basically uh, this complaint Nikki is saying that um, nosy is being used as a proxy uh, as an intermediary to 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 kind of um, to to kind of uh, uh, battle for someone that's behind her, you know. Ha have you gotten any any indication of kind of what this what this paragraph is supposed to be uh, indicating or 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 acknowledging? Yeah. So so it, it seems that um, Nikki's trying to imply that somehow Cardi B is behind all this. Mm -hmm. And that um, that somehow um, uh, that that Nosy is working at the direction of Cardi B, which is absolutely false. There's no connection between the two. They've never communicated. They don't know each other. Um, it's just it's it's just make believe. And um, and and I get it. It's probably good for publicity, and it makes for a better story. And you know, it's and I and I know there's. There's some history there between the two, um, but it's totally false. There's there's no truth to it. 
So uh, uh, Nikki is not working, or let's say Nosy is not working on, on Cardi B's behalf to try to uh, uh, harass Nikki. Is that right? No, it, there's no connection to anybody, not Cardi B, and not not anybody else. This is the, this is just uh, this is just totally false. Got you, got you. And you know, you talked about you know defamation and some of the some of the elements of that, and it does seem a, in in some way, even though Nikki is a, a public figure, that damages are going to come into this. Now I know in Cardi B's uh, case with with um, with Tasha K, there was some there was a lot of testimony about how Cardi B had been damaged uh, by all of the multiple multiple statements that Tasha K made over a period of of, of over two years. Uh, with this one statement about the cocaine, you know, do you see? Uh, how Nikki is saying that she was damaged, that her reputation, you know, her career was damaged by this one statement to the tune of more than seventy five thousand dollars. Uh, I'm just I'm just having a hard time understanding that in any way. Um, I think everybody knows, you know, Nikki Minaj has created a persona um, and that's part of why she has such a big following. <clears throat> part of the persona included the fact that she, um, you know, talked about drugs and drug use. And, um, and I just, I don't understand. I mean, you have somebody who comes out, gives an interview, says, <clears throat> I have no shame in doing drugs. I'm open about drugs. And if you want to know what drugs I enjoy the most, go listen to my music and you go listen to her music and it talks about lots of drugs. And, and so I'm confused about that. How do you get from there to um, somebody said I do drugs and that somehow damaged my business? I mean, she uses that to promote herself and her and her career um, and her persona. Um, and so, you know, it's it's pretty easy. I mean, you know, it's funny because every time I talk about this, people put these comments, you know, where where is that? It's so easy to find. I mean, I, sh I should post it, but, you know, I, I get busy <laughs> working on cases, but but it's it's so it's so blatantly out there. I mean, the interview she did <clears throat> is so clear and <clears throat> it's an interview where she's responding to claims that other people have made even before this whole incident that she uses drugs. Um, <clears throat> so I, I find it really hard to believe and I think jurors are going to find it equally hard to believe mm -hmm. that there are some damages here. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, for this one statement, it was, it's hard to see kind of how the, how the damages would be too much if there are any damages at all. Um, now, I, I know it's, it's, almost, it's like five o'clock over here in Atlanta, but I know you're over on the West Coast. It's in the middle of the day for you. So I appreciate you giving us uh, some of your time. I think I would requested 20 to 30 minutes. So I want to respect that. I do just want to ask if there's anything that you'd like to close with, anything that you want the public to know about this, this case. First of all, thanks, Lee. I, I, like I said, I love your channel and it's an honor to be um, asked to come on here. It's such a, um, such a great place to, to come on and talk and, and, um, and get our story out. Um, what I will say is there's, there's more to come. Um, we're going to start digging deep into this pretty soon. Um, and as we learn more, the public is going to learn more. And I think pretty soon they're going to see that the motivation behind this lawsuit is that, um, Nosy gave a forum to Jennifer and, um, and Jennifer came out and talked about how she was raped by Nikki's husband. Um, and I think when people see that they're, they're, you know, they're going to understand what's really going on here. Um, so we, we are eager to get started and, and, uh, hopefully, um, as this case develops more, we can come back and give you some more detail on what we start to learn. Absolutely. I, again, I really appreciate you accepting my, my invite to come out and I'd love to have you back whenever, whenever you have something new to share either about this case or maybe defamation in general. A lot of YouTubers are worried about defamation right now. It seems like a lot of uh, 
lawsuits are being threatened. Some dude threatened me two weeks ago, filing a lawsuit against me. So it's it's always good to have somebody that's that's a, an expert in the field uh, tell us about these things. So thank you so much to the Bobby Samini who has who is representing uh, Nosy Ho in her case uh, with uh, Nicki Minaj. So thank you so much, Mr. Samini. You can come back anytime. Okay. Thanks, Lee. Appreciate it. No problem. No problem. So shout out to the Bobby Samini. All right, guys, we are going to keep going for a little bit. Man, y'all bless me so much. <laughs> I wanted to be like a damn Tahiti or something. But when a big dog agrees to come on, you got to take that. And it's interesting because this is a big case. You know, I remember the Cardi B situation, and that was huge. Now, I don't know if this one will go as far as that one. That, that Cardi B, uh, Tasha K case had a lot of stuff in it. This, it just looks like it's just one statement. So I don't, I don't really see, you know, how, how this is going to blow up soup too much. Let me, let me uh, shout out a few of the super chats here. Shout out to Kevin Brooks. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin says, in honor of Monday's bountiful blessings, Lord, yes. TLA is about to pop bottles and whip out this meat for Mr. You, for Miss You Irk Me. <laughs> you Irk Me. Let's get it, Lee. Yes, and thank you again, guys, so much. I just, I've never seen anything like that. I will always remember that stream. Always. I mean, I wasn't going to stream for weeks after that. Y'all have retired your boy. I was like, it's like when you get that strip of 3,000, tell her to go home and she go home. You don't see her back for the weekend, man. Y'all were not going to see me. So I appreciate that. Shout out to Gabriel. It says, salute TLA. Good to see you, sir. Yes, good to see you too. Thank you so, so much. Oh, we have the nosy ho here. The nosy ho. What did she say? I'm lucky to have a great lawyer and will continue to help survivors of assault. Surviving the petty, yeah. That's how you know Nosy is a YouTuber, right? Because she uses assault, right? Our, our, our man Samini was up here with the R word, just <laughs> lighting it up, right? But that's okay. That's okay. Uh, because you have YouTubers and, and 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 we have our own language over here. But uh, I have no doubt that Samini is going to give her a a vigorous defense. This man is extremely well known, handled multiple class action lawsuits, an extremely successful uh, attorney, uh, one of the big dogs. And so Nosy is in excellent hands. We have Deborah. Thank you so much, Deborah. Says the boozy bugs, Nate the cashier. Yeah, man. <laughs> I didn't know what the heck was going on with Nate. Shout out to Nate the lawyer. Another one who's, who's who, I, I don't know, I don't know the situation over there. Is this guy threatening to file suit against Nate or Nate threatening to file a defamation? I think Nate is threatening to file a defamation suit against this guy. And Nate is a covering some apparent, I don't want to call them frauds, but some inconsistencies with this man's bankruptcy filings. Guys, if you're gonna, if you're gonna air out somebody's try to air out somebody's dirty laundry, or if you're gonna try to expose somebody, I mean, that's fine, but ah, you got to be clean yourself, you know, and if, if your bankruptcy filings are not <laughs> are not on par, it can get a little deep. So shout out to Nate and the Boozy Bucks. If y'all want to go to support Nate, I think I heard he's doing some type of crowdfunding over there. So please go over there and check out your boy. We got CC says, can the anti-slap law be used in this case? Oh, I wish I would have had, wish I would have saw that um, and asked, um, uh, asked uh, attorney Samini if that would play a part of it in this case up in New York. We have the uh, Kita G. Thank you so much, Kita G. Everybody trying to plug in. <laughs> Kita G says, I'm embarrassed for Nikki when being a ride or die chick goes wrong. Yeah. Although, I mean, as a man, it was like, I, like, I kind of want that, you know? <laughs> If I've been accused of this or that, I want I want a woman who rides or dies. And if she got the money, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But see, that's another thing, too. Could it be it's nothing for Nikki to set aside, you know, a million, two million and just say, hey, attorney, just go play with this and, you know, get us in Rolling Stones. Get us on the lead attorney's channel. Get everybody talking about it. Here's here's a million bucks. 
get us in the news, right? Y'all saw what Kim Kardashian's mom did for 400,000, right? Some, some people will get in the news using many, <laughs> uh, many ways. Kim Kardashian's mom used her, her child, used her daughter to, 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 to get fame right to, to get in the news now nikki's already famous but it could be you know here's some little play money and, and let's kick this up because again we looked at the statement that uh that 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 knows he's accused of making this statement here about uh nikki being uh nikki uh consuming uh cocaine and it's like if, even if she if nikki came out if Nicki Minaj came out and said, yeah, you know, I consume cocaine. If she herself said that, like, would that damage her reputation? I mean, she's like, she's one of the goats, right? I mean, for me, I got little Kim, but I don't even know if that's fair because I'm convinced a lot of little Kim shit was written by Biggie, <laughs> right? So I was like... You know what I'm saying? And I'm from the era where you actually were supposed to write your rhymes. Um, I know with Drake and Drake, it came out that Drake doesn't write his stuff and everybody gave Drake a pass, but I was, I'm from the era where you didn't get a pass for that. So I remember when, uh, when, when, uh, the queen B, you know, little Kim for me, she was the best at the end of the day though. You I mean, you just look at her numbers and you, numbers don't lie, right? Nikki is up there at the, at the tip top. So, um, who remembers uh, all about the Benjamins when she was talking about her, uh, talk about uh, Lil' Kim, when she was talking about her platinum womb? I was like, God damn, this shit's platinum? <laughs> Shout out to Lil' Kim, man. But, uh, but yeah, it's undeniable that, that, that Nikki is, 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 is top five, easy. I mean, you can decide where you want to put her. Some people put her at one. Certainly Nikki's up there, Cardi's up there. Little Kim is up there. You want to throw two more people in the mix. Uh, Someone uh, shout out to Nexus says MC Light. I don't, I don't know. I mean, did Georgie song MC Light, MC Light. But just, I mean, Little Kim's flow is like, I was like, put a yes in the chat if you think Little Kim wrote her songs and put a no if you think that she had help. I mean, I can't be the only one thinking like, come on, some of the stuff you said, Biggie had to write that. Put a yes if you think Nikki wrote, uh, not Nikki, if you think Little Kim wrote all of her song and put a no if you're like, uh, no, no, Little Kim. <laughs> I agree with y'all. Most people are like, no. I mean, it was too far. I mean, it was like genius. What are the chances that two geniuses are going to be in the same, you know? What are, what are the real chances? Biggie and Lil Kim, and they just happen to be, uh, I don't know. Most of y'all are saying, most of y'all agree with me. Most of y'all are saying, oh, man. Because that damn, uh, that All About the Benjamin song that she was on, was like, God, it was so tough, man. Shout out to Keita G. Um, Natalia says, can a lie detector be used for both parties? No. You're not really going to do any lie detector stuff because you see how it can you see how it it can be played. What happened when look little Kim? What happened when Kim Kardashian's mom took that lie detector test? Kim Kardashian's mom took a lie detector test. You know if she had any involvement with the sex tape, and she said no, and everybody was like, and the lie detector guy was like, yeah, she passed. Kim Kardashian's mom was watching the sex tapes and choosing which one was the best. But then the, 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 the lie detector said that, you know, she didn't have any involvement with her. So you, you really don't really use these lie detectors at, in court. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's not really reliable. Shout out to Marriage Causes Divorce. Thank you so much, Marriage Causes Divorce. Thank you. What does Marriage Cause Divorce say? Thank you for that last stream, TLA. You was dropping some real OG wisdom. Choosing an agreeable wife plus getting that prenup plus acquirement, yes, of a whole lot of luck plus accept divorce is still possible. That's premium OG Kush. Yes. 
guys, he's giving you the formula if you want a successful marriage. If you want a successful marriage, this is all you need. You know, you kind of do need to know yourself too. You you yourself need to be, a lot of men, most men, almost no man, ask his, asks himself if, if he is fit for the institution. So you do need that. There are a lot of men who are not fit for the institution of marriage. Just like there are a lot of men and women who are not fit for college, who are not fit for the military, not fit to be a YouTuber. There are a lot of women, Lord knows there are a lot of women who are not fit for the institution of marriage. I've dated some of them. <laughs> Mm -mm, you are not fit, right? So, but yeah, if you can get a, a wife that's 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 agreeable, you know, and, and she's fit and you're fit, get that dang prenup, get some luck, right? And adjust your expectations of what a marriage should be. <laughs> you, 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 if you can get all that, you're going to be extremely happy. Now, if you're missing one or two of those things, man, it can be hell. <laughs> it can be hell. But if you can line all those things up correctly, then you will absolutely have a successful, a successful marriage. Shout out to Marriage Causes Divorce. We got Centennial. Thank you so much, Centennial. This lead went from wearing his YSL hoodie on locals to his professional rehabilitator crib suit. <laughs> Shout out to my man, Centennial OG, one of the people that blessed me the most on that historic stream. It was crazy. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Centennial G. Thank you as well to all the, all the mods, man. I look over here and all I see is damn people timed out and deleted tweets. Y'all over there doing hand-to-hand -hand combat, huh? <laughs> Apparently we have some barbs to show up in the chat. Shout out to the barbs. I'm going to drop the link, guys. I ain't going to be on here long because y'all bless me so much, man. I'm like a stripper trying to get to Vegas. I ain't working tonight. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to work. Uh, we just had a big dog come through, so I absolutely uh, wanted to have him on. But let me drop the link. I ain't going to stay here too long. I'm going to pull up two or three of y'all, especially if y'all want, uh, if y'all want, uh, if y'all support Nikki. You know, I'm fair and balanced over here. So I dropped the link if anybody wants to hit it, but I ain't going to be here too long, guys. Um, shout out to Centennial. So <laughs> I already read that. So thank you so much, Centennial. You blessed me so, so much. Cannot tell you guys. And Centennial has been blessing me for the longest, for the longest. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I dropped the link if anybody wants to uh, to come up. Who else we got in this thing here? We got... Um, Uh, we got another one right here. We got marriage causes divorce again. Thank you. What does he say? He says, I've been in divorce court multiple times, Jesus. And a lot depends on who the judge is. This is 100% facts. I got a feminist judge and she took 70% of my money and assets. This is what you guys are not hearing, man. Y'all think it's 50-50 sometimes. In Georgia, it can easily be 70-30, 80-20, easy. And uh, when he says, when marriage causes divorce, says it depends, so much depends on the judge, he is 100% right. 100%. Uh, shout out to the real Mrs. P. Shout out to the real Mrs. P. No comment. No question, just the pure love of the gays. Always supporting me, man. This is another one. Always, always supporting me. Thank you so, so much, The Real Mrs. P. Cannot tell you how appreciative I am. Really, really thank you for all of y'all support, all of your support. You've been supporting me forever, ever, 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 and super graciously. So thank you for that. Dion, I think I see you back here, but uh, you'll need to come up. I need to see you on camera. We got all these dang, what do you call them, trolls? These trolls are everywhere. So anybody who wants to come on, it's fine if you come on, but you need to uh, cam up. Got the beautiful Marie Marie. Thank you, Marie Marie. Another strong black woman. Strong, strong black woman support your boy so, so hard. Um, thank you. And she supports me every single stream. 
every single stream. Thank you, thank you, the real Mrs. P. Thank you, Marie Marie. My man O1 says, O0 says, yeah, make sure that when you come up, you are clothed. <laughs> That's so true. Uh, the Centennial again. What does Centennial say? As the Yams attorney. Shout out to A-Free. As the Yams attorney during your Vegas trip, make sure those ends from the, from the live this week do not go towards Massages LLC. Owner Deshaun Watson. So true. Stay safe and no bare backing. The WAPS. <laughs> Boy, it's hard, man. That is one of the great things about being in a in a uh, long term relationship. Uh, what do you call it? Is that what you call it like an LTR long term relationship? Shout out to all the red pill dudes that want to spin plates and this and that. I love it, but it's like I mean, condom versus no condom. It's it's not even like a contest, right? But my man is right, man. When you go, when you start, you know. When you start doing your thing, you got to wrap it up, right? You got to wrap it up. So shout out to Centennial. Thank you. Got my man Randall Robinson in the house. Thank you so much. Says, I love your channel. Lead off topic. If Tom Brady's wife has a higher net worth, can Tom Brady, can Tom possibly be asked to pay her alimony? No. No. Alimony is almost never paid from the person who has less money to the person who has more money. Now, people are talking about alimony because apparently Tom Brady has signed or is about to sign some $350 million contract. So that's real money. So if you add that to what he already has, maybe his net worth will be around the same or even more, right? Uh, but but typically, uh, the person who has more money is the person that plays, pays alimony, not the, not the person that pay, that makes less or is worth less. But great point, great point, great question. We got the wrench turner in the house. Says if she can get nastier than a warm V A, <laughs> she's wifey, bro. Oh, I don't see how y'all drink V A. Oh, shout out to wrench turner because that is exactly right. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man, <laughs> this is terrible. Wrench turner is exactly right. Shout out to 2012 Jameson. Says Nate lawsuit fifty one percent funded. <laughs> Yes, I need to go over there and give my damn give me some give some boozy bucks, man. Thank you for for saying that. I need to figure. I don't know what's going on over there. I know Nate is going at this dude. I've never seen Nate like this. You know, I've seen I've seen you know Nate. You know what I'm saying? He's like he's more tip top than me. And I clicked on a video and Nate was like, "Oh, you want a nigga? Nigga here now." I was like, "What?" <laughs> Who is this nigga here now? <laughs> yeah, like they super relaxed, man. And so when he was like, the nigga's here now, I was like, what the hell is going on? So I need to go over there and figure out, <laughs> figure out what's going on. Oh, shout out to Crystal. Yes, the Fruit V8 is good. <laughs> I will get diabetes drinking that damn Fruit V8. You're exactly right. It's the vegetables V8. The new, the 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 fruit V8, mm, you're exactly right. Vanessa says, who got Nate that man? Yeah, it's this black dude. I don't know. It, I guess his name is Boozy. And I guess he's somebody on social media or something, but him and Nate are in a beef. And I have never seen Nate in a beef. And usually Nate stays above all this stuff. Nate is knee deep in it. He's knee deep, and apparently he's he's he's. It, it's being effective because Nate, I think, has un, has uncovered some inconsistencies with Boozy's bankruptcy filing, <laughs> and apparently the administrator has made some type of of indication that he's willing to look at at what Nate is is has got, and if that's the case, I mean that dang bankruptcy filing could be reopened. Maybe it can get bad. So <laughs> I don't know, man. Nate is on this, is on a nigga head. <laughs> Shout out to Dave Tasha K, man. Nate is on this dude's head. Shout out to Ed Allen, the beautiful Ed Allen, always supporting your boy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Shout out to N. Allen, man. No comment, no question. Just the love of the game. There's a special place in my heart for Ed Allen, man. Shout out to the Russian. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, y'all. Oh, my God. Y'all go check out her channel, too. She has she has some of the best shorts. She Her shorts are better than any of the shorts that I could ever make. And y'all love my shorts. Her shorts. Go check out the one about the, the pharmacy when the lady called in and, and asked her about her birthday. It was hilarious. If one of the mods could drop uh, in Allen's uh, channel in the chat, huh? Hilarious. Um, Stephanie, thank you so much, in Allen. Stephanie says, uh, "Yep, Nate the lawyer is chill. Barely curses. He must have been pissed. Absolutely, he was super, super pissed off." Um, shout out to Vanessa says, "Thank you, Danielle. Look, yeah, shout out to Danielle, man." <laughs> Shout out to Dedia. She is funny. I don't ever get to see you guys. Um, some of y'all who don't come up, I don't, I don't see you guys until I go back and look, um, look in the chat, right? So it's it's super interesting. So shout out to Danielle. I've been seeing some of your comments, Danielle. They make me they make me laugh. So shout out to Danielle. Look. And yeah, man, Nosy Ho's lawyer is legit. <laughs> legit. All right, it's not a game. This dude is not playing. Uh, let us bring up Vincent. Vincent, how are you doing? Como estamos de LA? Ah, mira no más. <laughs> Otro que habla español. Where are you from? Claro Where are you from? No soy Latino. <laughs> oh, you were in the locals, right? No, I'm not yeah. in the locals. Oh, I was I was talking to uh, I think another brother who was in the locals who also talked uh, who spoke Spanish. Where did you learn Spanish? In Chile. In Chile. Wow. How long were you over there? Uh, just a year. A year. Did you like it over there? I've never been to Chile. I, I loved it. Like honestly, as a as a black man, it's like the freest I've ever felt in my life. That's how it was. Never worried about police Mexico. rolling up on me. Like, you ain't worried just, about racism like that yeah, or race, anything. I mean, there was like you would re, you would meet people that were that didn't like black people, but it was mm -hmm. like institutionalized racism. It's, it's very different. Yeah, yeah, super interesting. What do you think about your girl Nicki Minaj and uh, Nosy Ho? What do you think about this case? Uh, um, I don't know. It, it just seems like. Nikki's definitely. Right Let me just shout out. I know my man ain't in here. Shout out to the Steel Curtain. I don't know if he's in here or not, but uh, shout out to him. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry. What were you saying? Oh, you're fine. Uh, it definitely seems like Nikki is singling her out and trying to make a point, but it, it definitely seems like, you know, according to Samini, she doesn't have much of a case if she's admitting that she's done drugs in songs. Like she's admitting yeah. to it. So that kind of kills her case. Mm hmm. So, yeah, I don't. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but uh, it looks like she's admitted to doing the drugs. And um, there was even a video where she she said, "Hey, if you want to know what type of drugs I use, go in my songs." And when you go in her songs, you see her talking about she uses cocaine. But exactly. in that same, to be fair, in that same video, she also says she never used cocaine. So it's kind of contradictory. So it's kind of like you say you do use cocaine, you say you don't use cocaine. Exactly. So, like, so, so who knows what to believe, right? Exactly. Uh, but yeah, we'll we will see. We will see. Um, all right. Well, listen. Thank you so much, Vincent. I really appreciate you coming up. I'm not gonna stay here long, man. They blessed me too much. I need to get off this stage. <laughs> okay. Muchas gracias, uh, uh, Igualmente. Shout out to my man, Vincent. All right. A uh, shout out to uh, two, two, 2012. Jameson says. Uh, Ron Coleman is the attorney. Said Nate planted evidence and was not an American or a lawyer. God damn, <laughs> he's not a lawyer. He's not American. Planted evidence. Nate planted evidence into what? That's what I don't understand. Into what? Was there a case or something? I don't know. Shout out to my man Steel Curtain if he's over here. We got Auntie Chris out here. How you doing, Auntie Chris? Hi, lead attorney. How you doing? I am doing great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, enjoying this beautiful day. <laughs> it is beautiful. That is nice. What um, do you think about this whole nosy ho uh, Nicki Minaj situation? Okay, uh, I'm Barb. Okay, 
Okay. I'm a Barb because my daughter's a, because my daughter's a Barb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so there was a question in the chat and it said, uh, should the lawyer be talking about the case so early? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of the information that he's talking about can actually be used against him and Nosy when it does go to trial. So is it is it good to talk about the case on a YouTube channel platform like that? Because people are not really taking him that serious because he's hopping from YouTube channel to YouTube channel. And it's the YouTube channel that supports more of Party B. Mm-hmm. Right. So it makes everything so suspicious. Yeah, I mean, this, so. is, this is an interesting point. Um, I'll, I'll address the second point later about, you know, he's on YouTube channel to YouTube channel. And what right. people need to know is that YouTube nowadays is more popular than television. You know, if you watch that uh, Amber Heard trial, those, mm-hmm. uh, the, the views just on, on uh, law and crime alone were way more than any network television uh, channel was getting. So when you right. say he's hopping from YouTube to YouTube, it's not really recognizing that YouTube is so powerful. Like it's it's not right. just all oh, just a YouTube thing. No, it's huge to, to, to be on YouTube. <laughs> number one, and number two, should he be talking about the case? Absolutely, guys. Okay. I, attorney attorneys talk about cases all the time down here right. in Atlanta. When um when they when the there's rappers called Young Thug and Gunner. I don't know if right. you know who they are. Uh, oh, yeah. The DA, yeah. the DA is doing press conference after press conference after press conference talking right. about how this case is going. Attorneys talk to the media all the time about their case, and that's an important part of representation. Okay. Or, I mean, do they do that for to pursue public opinion? Or they do that to help build uh the case on their side? Like I'm I'm just kind of confused about that. Yeah, part of it is to is to kind of get the case out because, for example, right. you saw in this complaint that that Nikki that Nikki filed, she's right. insulting uh, she's insulting Nosy Ho, and yeah. a lot of time and and saying things that aren't necessarily true, and so what right. you really need is two sides of the case, and so okay. if you hire if you hire an attorney, Auntie Auntie Chris, and the other side is just beating up on you in public and beating up on you in public. You want right. your representative to go out there and, okay. and to represent you not only in court, but also in the public. Also, you know, right. it's, it's very difficult for, for you, for example, Auntie Chris, to be able to talk about something and talk about your case and not screw it up. Right. Because you're not right. a professional. But this That's man right. is this man is a professional. He's represented Don Sperling, who's the owner of. Of one of the NBA teams, the LA Clippers, he's represented. I know, but he lost lead attorney. He lost that case. (laughs) Listen, let me tell you something. You cannot point to any attorney who has not lost cases. Not okay. I know. Well, maybe we should wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, Because you say you know, but then you brought it up. So if you if if you really knew, I wouldn't think I wouldn't have thought that you brought it up. You know, you. Oh, I I mean, I know a lot of stuff. So (laughs) I know a lot of things. But the fact that you brought up that he lost the case. Right. And what I'm telling you is you cannot name a top 10 attorney in the nation that has not lost the case. You cannot name excellent attorneys that haven't lost cases. If you've been trying oh, I agree. cases. Okay. So when you I, say, I, oh, well, he lost the case, I just find that interesting because all attorneys lose cases. All attorneys win well, cases it, and all attorneys lose cases. Well, mm-hmm. but the reason why I said that is because with social media, it's all about public perception. And so him losing that case in the public social media's eyes, he did a little bit damage. So I'm just speaking from I the totally social media disagree. aspect of it. I mean, if you yeah. if, if you don't know about the law and you say, oh, well, this attorney lost the case, then he's trash. Well, OK, but that well, doesn't speak to okay, him. But, that, speaks, but for, that speaks to you. Right. But for you or I, because. We we can understand that, but for your average person who may not be, oh, uh, I don't know, I don't know how I can say it, but a lot of people may not understand that some lawyers will lose. But on the social no, no, media platform, where lawyers, you have not auntie, auntie, let me just jump in. Not some lawyers will lose. That does, it doesn't exist. Some lawyers, all lawyers lose 
cases. That's what I need you to understand. All <laughs> okay, lawyers. I, okay, but what I'm trying to say is on social media, if you mm -hmm. say somebody is losing or have lost case, that lose credibility with that person. But on Oh, that's the Amazon guy. But on <laughs> she know she's about to get snatched up. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> but oh, I, I don't gosh. know. But one more other thing, real quick, and I'm gonna go. Um, yeah. The reason why I'm I'm having a hard time with Nosy's um, approach is uh -huh. because I remember two years ago. She was on social media saying the same thing about Nicki Minaj and her drug use. The same mm -hmm. thing. So it's it's a repeated um, offense that she has done. It wasn't just last week or last month that she said that she has been repeating this for like two years ago. So there has been a pattern. It's not just a one time uh, offense. So that's kind of what I want to put out there. Nosy is not innocent by any means necessary. Her mouth is very reckless. And so I hope that she will lose big time. And so that's I all I got to say. All right. Well, listen, shout out to Auntie Chris and all the barbs. You know, people <laughs> people can disagree. So that is absolutely true. You've got some people representing the barbs, some people representing nosy. That's totally fair. Thank right. you so much, Auntie Chris, for coming up. Really appreciate it. All right. Bye. It. Bye. Bye. You got uh, Technological Chaos says Nate is about to turn that guy's bank account into the best comedy show of all time. So, so true. We got uh, the Steel Curtain says I've been loaded down with a lot of work these days, but still listening in. Nate is talking boozy, to, taking boozy to the woodshed. <laughs> I need to get back over there, man. Y'all bless me so much. My mind has just been. Plus, I had mediation yesterday. I got mediation tomorrow. But uh, I need to figure out what's going on over there. Thank you. So thank you so much, Steel Curtain. It's great to see you, brother. My man Steel Curtain came out to my uh, my uh, my meetup, man. It's so great to see him. We got the magician. Uh, and this, thank you, magician. This is exactly what I need. The TLDR. I need to figure out because they're going back and forth. And it, it seems like it's too late for me to jump in. Says, uh, Chris Boozy was on Team Amber Heard started coming out law to really and said some things. Oh my God. Said some things about Nate's parents, rough upbringing and credentials as a cop and a lawyer. So Nate is going for that neck. Yeah, man. You start talking about people's parents and their reputation as a police officer and their reputation as a day attorney. Golly, he's, just, he's hitting everything you can hit. The one thing they didn't say is he got a small dick, right? That's what they, that's what they hit me with. <laughs> Shout out to that girl. <laughs> I'm saying, ain't your mama black, right? Yeah, man, they will get you. <laughs> but I guess since Chris Boozy is a man, I guess that would be a little weird. But let it be a woman. Now they're going straight for that, right? Straight for that. Thank you, Magician. I appreciate that, TLDR. Uh, because I know Nate is on that dude's, he's, he's on it. Shout out to Marriage Causes Divorces. Has put everything in the open and settle before court, which would be good too, guys. It's, it's never good to, I mean, sometimes you got to go to trial, but if you can settle a case on good terms, it's always better because you never know what these judges are going to do. No matter how great your attorney is, your attorney does not know 100% what that damn judge is going to do. And judges will surprise you. Uh, a lot of times they'll surprise you because you know what judges are? They are humans. And do you know what humans do? They make mistakes. And it is nothing for a judge to make a mistake in your case. That's why we have the appeals court. And then we have a court over the appeals court because those appeal judges can make mistakes. There are mistakes all up and down the line. Even the Supreme Court. What did the Supreme Court say? Oh, man, we made a mistake. They, this should have never been this abortion. If the Supreme Court can make mistakes... And I really want to I really want to say this to the whole Chris thing, Ani Chris thing too, talking about he lost it or talking about uh, an attorney losing a case. Like you don't understand how the <laughs> you don't understand how the system works. You don't understand how many flaws there are in the system. I mean, Roe v. Wade was just overturned, and the court that overturned Roe v. Wade said that the other Supreme Court made mistakes. So it's like you're arguing to one particular, you're arguing to one particular judge 
this judge can make a mistake all day. Shit, these juries can make mistakes all day. And then you got to appeal. And the appeals court can make a mistake. And you appeal again. That court makes a mistake. I mean, just it's like going into surgery sometimes. A lot of surgeries, they can go great. But like a lot of after a lot of surgeries, it's like, and that go bad. It's like, was it just me or did the doctor mess up? Like, you don't know what happened. So settling a case, guys, it keeps you out of surgery. Sometimes if you can do something to avoid surgery, that's the best way to do it because you never know what you're going to get. When you, If you got lower back pain and you're going to get operated on on your lower back, mm -mm, you might want to do some, you might want to go to the gym and try to strengthen your back muscles or something because when you go, in, when you go into that knife, you don't know how it's going to turn out. It could turn out great, but it could be a disaster. Same way with these courts, man. You go into trial, it can turn out great. Look at Cardi. Cardi came up for a meal. But man, it could turn out disastrous. Shout out to Almond Eyes. Thank you so much, Almond Eyes. What is Almond Eyes? Says, this chick is a great example of what is wrong. Supporting some things and can't explain why. <laughs> Just because someone else doing it. Two season and say. <laughs> Man, Almond Eyes picking up on it. You know, because shout out to Ani Chris. Ani Chris was like, I'm a Barb. And it's like, okay, why are you a Barb? I'm a Barb because my daughter's a Barb. Well, is that a good reason to be a Barb? <laughs> right? And that's what uh, Almond Eyes is saying. You know, it's like, <laughs> I'm a Republican because my cousin is a Republican. Okay, but what about your mind? Right? Is it bad to be a Barb? No. Is it bad to be a Republican? No. You can be what you want to be, but you should be what you want to be for you. Uh, shout out to BAM Radio. I see you back here, BAM Radio, but over here, we uh, we all cam up over here because all these dang trolls. So I'll, I'll bring you up if you want to cam up. Oh, my goodness. Look who we got. <laughs> Look who we got. We got AV's feet up in the house. Shout out to the AV's feet. <laughs> With the feet propped up like that. Shut up to AV's feet, man. Says he lost a case going up against 31 other team owners. Does it mean he's a bad attorney? Obviously, he's an excellent attorney. <laughs> Some people just don't understand, but that's fine. That's fine. I'm over here concentrating on AV's feet. <laughs> man, somebody, somebody tell AV just to stop fighting it. Stop fighting it. Lay your morals aside. Go ahead, open up that OnlyFans. Go on and crack it open. <laughs> Go on and put them feet on OnlyFans. You see what it did with what happened when you put them on YouTube. It's your highest viewed video. Go on and open up the OnlyFans. Somebody send her. Everybody go on that damn shoe video right now and say, hashtag OnlyFans. Do something. Find somebody tell me a good hashtag. Y'all go over there and spam her damn foot video, man. <laughs> Shout out to AV's feet. I mean, you're exactly right too, AV's feet. Your 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 super chat is just super generous, but I mean the comment is just extremely on point. Shout out to Rich T says this is the owner of Big Shot Ammo. Shout out to Big Shot Ammo. Says I'm in the hospital. Oh my god, I'm in the hospital for my asthma with these seasonal allergies. Ugh, that's tough. I had I had asthma as a kid, but I grew out of it. Uh, you got the nurses cracking up. Shout out to the nurses. Shout out to the nurses taking care of Big Shot Ammo. I had to show them who the fuck TLA is. Salute, pimp. The bottom of the bottle, gang. Yeah, man. Shout out to these nurses. Shout out to the nurses. Thank you so much, uh, Rich T. Really, really appreciate it, pimp. Um... Who we got? We got Centennial again. Thank you. Centennial says, question, do you have professional athletes seeking your advice prior to marriage these days? If so, is there a site? Is there a site anyone going pro can reference? That's such a great question. The answer is no. The answer is you can't tell these 24-year-olds who are making $8 million anything. You can't tell them anything. They're 24 Got eight million. 
you know, can run a 4-3, can bench press 405, multiple reps, can squat 600. What are you going to tell them? Right? They, you know, they, they know everything. Guys, these guys are trained. They have people brought in to tell them how to manage their money, how to stay away from these women, you know, what to do with their money. Do they listen? They don't listen. Right? So that's a great question. The answer is no. They come to you afterwards. <laughs> really, their baby mamas come to you. That's who comes to you. And they're just like, man, take it. Cam Newton, what happened to Cam? He got four, five kids. Four, five kids. You know? But he got it. That's the thing. I mean, they got it. You, you, you're going to order Cam Newton. Let's say you order him to pay 50 grand a month. You, th you think he ain't got it? Now, will he have it, you know, for 20 years or, you know, 18 years? Who knows? He needs to get it, you know, because it starts to add up. But in the moment when they're with that Instagram chick and they hitting it raw and they're like, ah, oh, should I stay in or should I pull out? Should I stay in and pull out? They're like, I got it. I got it. You know, put me on child support for 18 years. I got it, baby. Because <laughs> they got it. So you can't. They don't want to hear nothing. So that's a great point. Rich T says, <laughs> we talking about my little sis AV's feet, but y'all ain't said nothing about Kita's cheeks. Oh my God. Shout out to Kita's cheeks, man. Even me, when I saw them things, I was like, oh yeah, Kita. <laughs> oh yeah, Kita. <laughs> Shout out to Kita's cheeks. My bad, my bad, uh, my bad. Uh, Big Shot Ammo is exactly right on that. Shout out to D. Burm says, are you going to cover Cardi B filing to collect on Tasha K? Yeah, I was going to cover that, man. They sent me to, into retirement on Monday's stream. They blessed me so much. They were like, Lee, don't come back for two weeks. <laughs> Do not come back for two weeks. Oh, y'all weren't going to see me. I, I obey. <laughs> I, I am an, I'm obedient. I am an obedient stripper. <laughs> Somebody, if I, you know, it's Thursday night. And so, dude, they come in and say, hey, I don't want to see you here for, for hear me, three grand. I don't want to see you here Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Bye, baby. <laughs> I'm obedient. Y'all Y'all trying to sit my ass down? I'm going to sit my ass down. Believe that. But uh, I had a big dog come in, so I had to pop in for a second. Shout out to Jay. Thank you so much, Jay. What does Jay say? Salute to you, Lee. Pure love of the game. <laughs> yes, man. Yes, I appreciate that, Jay. Thank you so much. Super, super generous of you. Y'all guys be blessing me. I shouldn't even be on here, man. I just popped in uh, to let the big dog speak for a second. But but yeah, man, shout out. So, so thank you so much, Jay. I appreciate that. And you just nailing in my retirement. Y'all ain't going to see me, man. Y'all are not going to see me. So thank you so much. Super, super generous of you, Jay. Thank you. What does Vanessa say? Not an obedient stripper. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you? Any, any dudes ever, any dudes just ever, ever, ever gave a, a stripper just enough money? She just, she just take her shit and go. It's damn 1030. She's supposed to be there till two. You're broke off. She's like, bye, y'all. <laughs> I'm going on. That's what y'all did to me. Y'all sat my ass down. <laughs> so I, I, I would have came back in October. I would have came back somewhere around October, November. You know, October, November. I, I, uh, <laughs> I'm an obedient stripper. And, you know, shout out to, uh, I mean, I don't even want to put Samini in it. Now I ain't even going to say it. But I, what I was going to say, though, leave Samini out of this. What I was going to say, though, is that, um, Now I can't even say it because I don't put some media in it, right? But just know that, man, attorneys, you know, and really, I really shouldn't put some media in this because he's taking this case for free. But a lot of times, attorneys, man, we're just kind of like hired guns. And we'll go to the highest bidder, you know, and, you know, we just get passed around. <laughs> But uh, that, that's if you're a regular lead attorney like me. You know, if you are, if you're on some meanie level, he, he he's, he's different. But shoot, brother like me, boy, I am I am up for grabs. I am for sale. 
Uh, but anyway, let me get out of here, guys. Shout out, shout out to Danielle. Let me get the fuck out of here. Y'all done sat me down. I really want to thank uh, everybody. Shout out to all the barbs. Shout out to everybody uh, rocking and representing for Nosy. Shout out to Bobby Samini coming on. What is Richard J says? Did you put Chris? <laughs> Man, I got pulled into some shit, man. I didn't even know. I didn't even know about that blue waffle shit. Uh, my man says, "Did you put Crisco on your blue waffles, or does that irk you?" <laughs> y'all want to hear it one time for the culture? I don't know if I can find it off the damn rip, man. <laughs> I don't know if I can find it off the rip, boy. That that woman was mad at the lead. What she say? She wanted to. She wanted Tasha K to cut my dick off, and then she wanted to put the. She wanted to put my dick on the platter, and then she wanted to suck the head or something like that. I was like, "What's wrong with these women?" Not all women lead. Granted, of course, of course, not all women. What woman's gonna think of something sick to say like that? Thank the Lord, it's not all women. Because I'm purple pill. I love women, man. I'm trying to get in a long term relationship. These, 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 uh, these blue pit, these blue pill, these red pill dudes always trying to have a uh, rotations, four girl rotation, five girl rotation. Oh man, I'm just trying to find one good woman. Just can we just be settled? I'm older now, guys. I'm 45. You know, I just want, can I just get one woman? But no, nah, man, they talking about they want to cut your dick off and suck the head and stuff. And it's like, come on. Mary Blue is like, what? That is disturbing. You're exactly right, Mary Blue. Exactly right. Shout out to my man, the Steel Curtain. All right, so I'm going to leave it, man. I'm so happy to see Steel Curtain over here. I know my man busy. I'm going to leave it on this. Let me thank everybody. Oh, did I get my man Perry? Uh, I got to go up and get my man Perry. I missed that one. Perry said, um, speaking of Cam Newton, he attended the great University of the South War Eagle. No, your boy, Takeo Spikes, man. I saw him at a restaurant downtown. Shout out to Takeo, man. Uh, I don't know, though. I'm, I'm a bulldog through and through, man. Fuck y'all War Eagles. <laughs> we, we the bulldogs over here. Go dog sick them. Shit, I'm a double dog, undergrad and law school. Shit, we the champions over here. So uh, shout out. <laughs> I was going to say, cut it off. That's what she wanted, man. This is fucking crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, got, uh, oh. <laughs> said Richard A. said Blue Waffles is single. Is Blue Waffles, is she single, man? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why Blue Waffles is single. The Centennial says she could have been talking about crawfish if she's a big Shirley. That's the thing. She ain't even a big Shirley, man. I don't know what's wrong with this lady. Uh, but listen, y'all stop sending me super chats, man. Y'all already done sat me out till damn October. Let me let me get the fuck out of here. Listen. <laughs> Shout out to Santino and Go Trojans and the Cobbles. All right, listen, let me get the fuck out of here. Listen, thank you guys so much. Shout out to all the Barb. Shout out to all everybody representing Nosy Ho. Shout out to Nosy. She was in the chat. Shout out to Bobby Samini. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Top tier elite attorney. And she's like, hey, man, let's go. Right? So Nosy Ho is in good hands. So this is going to be interesting. Um, so we'll keep up with it. And um, shout out to Vincent. Vincent, no, man, I'm about to get the damn solder, boy. So uh, shout out to everybody who came through. Y'all hit the like button on the way out. And I will see y'all next time. Now, I know we reviewed the uh, the complaint. I know we talked about what defamation is, this and that. None of this has been legal advice. I am not your attorney. I am the lead attorney. And I'm here to help you lawyer up. All right, everybody have a good night.